Let's go. Start your show now. Press one to hear important instructions. Yes. Let's break it down now. Oh, I guess I gotta actually do something. I'm like, well, where is it? Where is it? Let's get it. Let's get it popping, get it popping, yo. It's about to drop right now, and we get it down, and we gonna come around. My name is Sun Seven Five Two, and we gonna do what we really came to. We can't came through. What's up, y'all? Urban Therapy with Sun Sun Seven Five Two, and this is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. We talk about home repairs that have to wait sometimes in insurance. Home repairs that have to wait. Hey, listen, if you own your own crib, you want to want to listen to this show. If you own your own house, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Almost everything I'm, that I'm going to talk about today on this show today, you're probably going to be able to relate to because, you know, anybody who owns their own house, shout out to people who rent their houses or whatever, but I'm not, this is this show is not for them. I'm talking to my homeowners. I'm talking to my people who have a mortgage. I'm talking to my people who have finally paid off their homes. I'm talking to my people who uh, who know what it's like to live in, 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 in a house where you know that you're always going to have some type of home repairs or even home improvement that you need to perform. And, you know, that can have a direct bearing on your bottom line. I'm talking about the how much money that you got and the way that you get paid. It's really real. When the home repairs they have to get done, you get it's not a thrill. And that's my truth. You know, that roof is leaking. And I'm talking about the things that I'm speaking of. It's like a hand and glove. You sometimes feel like the home ain't showing you no love. And that's supposed to be where the heart is. And I'm going to start this. And that's, yo, we about to get into this whole thing. Home repairs that have to wait sometimes. Hey, sometimes you have to prioritize. Am I going to am I going to fix this or that? This or that? This or that? This or that? Hey, sometimes even trying to beautify your home, you can mess it up. Yo, you tried to hang that hang that picture frame and you didn't understand that you supposed to hang hang the nail on that uh, uh on, on the on the uh on the studs. You got a hole right there in your wall now. It's an easy thing to fix. It really is. It's an easy thing to fix. And we're going to get into some easy way to fix things and how you can find out easy ways to be able to do home repairs and things like that. So this show is for you. And we're going to break it down. That's what we do. Uh, Urban Therapy people, son. I'm the one, but I'm 752 and I'm down with you. Whoa. So let's get it popping like that. So we're talking about home repairs that have to wait sometimes home repairs that have to wait sometimes what y'all know about that you know anybody who owns a house anybody who has bought a house anybody who lives in a house you know that there are always some home repairs that need to be done i don't care if you just bought your home and and the previous owner did everything in the house to fix it up you know what that means that means that you don't have any major repairs that need to be done You'll never live in a home that doesn't need any repairs, ever. Now, of course, that depends on how nitpicky you are. It depends on how detail-oriented you are. It depends on what will pass or fail in your in your area of expectations. Um, personally, for me, I would never want to move into a house that was already ready to go. For example, I look at houses all the time. I have this this real estate service that sends me um, listings of houses that are available. And, you know, the, the real estate market is very expensive nowadays in Philadelphia. They're taking these regular row homes and they are charging $200,000 and $300,000 and $400,000 for them. I'm like, wow. I never thought I would see that in the city. And, and really, it's just because of the renovations that they have made to these properties, these small properties. Because, listen, 1,200 square feet, foot, foot feet is 1,200 square feet. You can't make 1,200 square feet be 1,500 square feet. You can't make 1,500 square feet be 2,100 square feet. It is what it is. So what you do to that 1,200, 1,500 or 2,100 square feet is going to be the thing that makes that property extremely affordable or makes it a bill. 
So they send me these listings and I see like, wow. First of all, all the houses look the same to me. The interior of all the homes look the same. The exterior of all the homes look different, but the interior all looks the same. Gray paint, central air, you know, um, a, a, a bathroom and a half if they can pull it off. Some some of the places had two ba- two and a half or whatever. But I noticed that a half bathroom, and if you don't know what a half bathroom is, that's a bathroom that doesn't have a, a bath or a shower in it. So it has a sink and a toilet in there. So if you don't want people coming in your house, especially like strangers, or if you have like a, a, a get to, if you have get togethers or, or gatherings, company over your house you might not want them to go upstairs in your in your main bathroom because then you know some people get a little crazy and you know they start snooping around going in your medicine cabinet if doors are open to other rooms they might peep their head in there you know, things like that so you send them to the half bathroom and the ba- half bathroom is oftentimes in in the living room area between the living room and the dining room area or it's down in the basement half bath the toilet in the sink. It's all you need. But anyway, all of the houses look the same. The interior, all of the houses look the same. It's, I mean, down to the painting. I'm like, who decided that gray paint was a was a good idea for for a new house? So I'm saying all that to say that even though it's a brand new um, interior, newly renovated house. None of those houses look like I would want want them to look. You know, they have all of the all of the you know bells and whistles, recessed lighting, high hat lighting, high hat. You know those lights that are in the ceiling. You know you gotta get a ladder and screw the bulb because it's in the ceiling. Yeah, pretty nice, pretty nice. You know how much they charge for that little. For that little easy to do type of thing, you know, they cut a hole in this in the sheet rock, run the run the electricity, you know, through through um over the sheet rock, and look, you got recessed lighting, cool, no lamps for you, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars. Like, I know one thing. I will never be able to afford to live in South Philly ever again. South Philly is prime real estate, according to these listings. So, so I'm saying all this to say that even if you move into a house that is newly renovated, they they um, supposedly took care of all the repairs, it doesn't mean that it's made the way that you want it to be made. So... In order to make it the way you want it to be made, in order for it to fulfill your vision, and in order for it to be a home that is built for you, you're going to have to get it done the way you want it to do, you the way you want them done. And that means that you have to do home improvements, and home improvements are home repairs. It's the same thing. You know, you're going to have to get out a ladder, a crowbar, a, a screw gun. You know, a drill. You're going to have to get some sheetrock, some joint compound, some compound tape. You know what I mean? Those those kind of things. Drywall screws, baby. Got to hang some rock. Um, Plumbing and heating. Plumbing and heating. Just because you have a brand new faucet doesn't mean that 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 a sink won't leak it doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean that a faucet won't leak it doesn't mean that a j bend or or what they call a track or y'all might just call it the uh what 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 are, what are people who don't know the name of of the track call it what do they call it a lot of times they call it the j bend the j bend cuz it's shaped like a j uh, yeah you might have uh, the j bend might not be screwed tight tight enough and if that's that's leaking then that's going to mess up the uh uh what do, what do you call um uh, under the sink um I've been out of the game too long I should not be struggling with these terms but anyway the uh, w- w- if it messes up the bottom of the sink I mean under the sink 
then it's going to leak down into the into the floor and then the floor down into the floor under i mean the ceiling under that now you've got real problems so yeah just because it's a new faucet doesn't mean that the plumber did what he was supposed to do i've seen it i've seen it and plumbing is an expensive repair plumbers get paid a lot of money you know why because a lot of people don't know how to do plumbing and a lot of people don't want to do it. Well, you know, in order to be a plumber, you got to get wet. You got to step in poop and deal with pee. Poop and pee. Pee, 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 pee and poop. Poop and pee, 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 pee and poop. Terry Hawkins holding it down for the D all day, every day, 24-7, 365, 52 weeks a year. It's good to see me some of you. Did I say 12 months? Yes, I hope I did. And if I didn't, I'm going to say it again. Good to see me some you. So we're talking about home repairs that, that have to wait sometimes. And what we're talking about when we say home repairs that have to wait sometimes is sometimes you may not have the finances available to go ahead and make that repair. So you might have to do some things to just hold the fort down until you can get the money up to fix it. Some things can't wait. Some things can for example, some things in your house may be considered a luxury more than they are considered a necessity. Things like air conditioning. Hey, you might not have the money to either put in an air conditioning unit, a central air conditioning unit, or if your air conditioning unit, if your central air conditioning unit is broken, you may not have the money to get it repaired. So what do you do? See, to get your air conditioning unit repaired, it can cost you thousands of dollars easily. It's going to cost you in the high hundreds without a doubt. Without a doubt. They're going to charge you $100 just to come out. Service, service fee. You know, just for having to come out. And then if you get it repaired, you're looking at no less than a thousand, no less than a thousand. And those are facts. Now, you you know, and I know that you can get an air conditioner that you can put in your window for less than five hundred dollars. What you going to do? We talking about home repairs that have to wait sometimes. So, yeah, you might be rocking out with this. Well, listen, um, the kids are gone anyway. So, you know, and if they want if they want air, then they can all come in my room because we put in the air conditioner in my room. So y'all want to watch cartoons? Watch them in my room. Y'all want to play on your phone? Play on your phone in my room until I kick y'all out later on. And by that time, it's nighttime. Y'all can rock out with y'all fans. Fans and air conditioner. Fans and air conditioner. Fans and, air, fan, fan, fans and air conditioners. Three hundred dollars on sale at uh um at Home Depot. Five thousand BTUs. You gonna jump on that? You gonna jump on that with the quickness? You know what I mean? Especially if you buy an air conditioner, an air conditioner in the in the, in the fall and winter times when the demand is down. Cheap, 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 cheap. You prepare and you're getting your nuts together for the winter time, my squirrel. It's going to be all right, though. It's a good look. It's going to be a, a good day and a good look. But these are the, the decisions you have to make sometimes when you're talking about home repairs. It ain't always as easy as just swiping your credit card or, or, uh, going to the bank and withdrawing some cash or or um calling your calling your cousin or your ex-boyfriend or whatever who who's a handyman around the house and he he'll get it done for cheap it's not always it's not always as simple as that sometimes you just don't have the money other bills that you have are pressing other life's responsibilities are, are are coming through and you got to deal with them. You got to deal with them. You understand what I'm saying? You got to deal with them. Now, we're talking about how you can 
decide or prioritize how much you're going to spend when it comes to to a, a, a luxury like air conditioning. But what about heating? What about your heat? Let your heater be broke. If you live up north, it's not an option for you to get that thing fixed. It's not an option. Here's where it might have to be an option. It might have to be an option if you didn't pay your gas bill. So ain't no central heating for you. I mean, yeah, well, it's, it is central heating. But if your air, if your heating unit is broke and you may need a, a brand new he, heating unit, which is going to run you anywhere from two thousand dollars, four to five thousand dollars, that might or might not include installation and all of that with a warranty. It might or might not include all of that. Might or might not. So you got to make a decision. Do I get this brand new heater? Because I got to have heat in the house. You can live without air in the house. You have alternatives. But when it comes to heat in the house, you got to have that heat. Especially, if, you know, uh, Terry Terry and Stacy, y'all live up, y'all y'all live in Michigan. You Listen, it get too cold up there for you not to have no heat. Y'all ain't going to survive those falls and winters. It's not going to happen. It's cold. It's cold in the fall and winter up there. It is. Ain't no way around it. Now, you can go get a bunch of space heaters, which is going to drive your electric bill through the roof. But you can go ahead and do it. If you can't afford to get your heater fixed. See, that's not an expense that is covered by the gas company. That's on you to get your heater fixed. It's on them to provide to provide the gas, which will provide the heat. Like the gas is on. Shout out to my people. Shout out to my people heating the house. You know, taking the chill off the house by opening their stove, turning it all the way up to like 400 degrees. No, they say it's dangerous to do that. Because, you know, that's the gas. and you know I mean, they say you're not supposed to do that. Shout out to my people who do it. Because y'all know, it's nigganomics. We got to do what we got to do. TK Wright says, plumbing is expensive. Man, you ain't never, 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 never. You ain't never, never, never lied. It's the truth. And you feel it inside. Speaking of feeling inside, let's get it popping. Urban Therapy with Sun, Sun, 752 with this, the Urban Therapy with Sun show. We do this every single Sunday from 1 p.m. till around 2.30-ish. And the reason that we say 2.30-ish is because sometimes it gets so heated that we just have to do a little OT on a Sunday. And it is Sunday. This is the show where adults come out and play with other adults. We laugh, we cry, we argue, fuss, and fight, go back and forth with each other, bust it up all crazy. We take an introspective look into our own personality to see the way that the universe projects us into this thing called the world and try to figure out this thing called life. I am your host, Son752, a.k.a. Omar with the... And if you can't say Omar with the... Well, then you just say Omar with the R. This is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. And today, today, we are talking about home repairs that have to wait sometimes. Because sometimes you don't have the money. Sometimes you don't have the money. Sometimes you might have enough money and you might not have the time to get them repaired. If you are, if you are a do-it-yourselfer or if you requ- if you require repairs that that um call for you to be in the home shout out to people who don't trust contractors coming into their home when they're not there shout out to y'all because i understand i ain't gonna lie i understand and no it's not just a black contractor thing white contractors steal too people steal you know and uh and i'm not saying that they all do not and i'm not even suggesting suggesting that contractors are the ones who, who who participate in that. Nonetheless, it's your home. You have the right to protect it in any way that you want to. Any way that you see fit, you have the right to pro- pro- um, pro- um, protect your home. Defend your space. You paying for it, it's all yours. 30-year mortgage, baby. 30-year mortgage. 
You do whatever it is that you need to do in order to keep your place because it is an asset. We're not talking about a car this time. We're talking about a house. We're talking about a house, baby. That's where all your belongings are. All right. So, so uh, yeah, like I said, shout out to people who, who insist on being home if contractors are going to come into their home to do um, price, um, do um, repairs. You know, not everybody is down to leave a key in the key box and tell them to just go for yours and put the key back in the in the key lock box when they're done. Not everybody wants to do that. Um, particularly Muslims. Muslims, Muslim men are required to be home when another man comes into their home and their woman is home. It's a law to make sure that. You know, it's supposed to ensure that you, your woman is protected by would-be sexual attackers, attackers and assailants. And I know people who follow that to the letter. I ain't mad at them. How you going to be mad at that? Ain't no reason to be mad at that. So you might not have the time to do the repairs if you are doing it yourself or if you are paying somebody to do home repairs and you you need to be home. Maybe you need to be home just to specifically show them exactly what you want done. Some people take control over their home repairs and I ain't mad at them for that either. Because there have been times when you told, you specifically told or mapped out or even showed a picture to a contractor about what you wanted and they didn't do it. They didn't do it. All right. So it may be a time, a time sensitive or time convenience or inconvenience issue that you're dealing with. All right. So um, let's say. You have a, a leaky roof or leaky gutters or your your uh your siding, the siding on your house. If you have siding on your house, some of it has blown off in the wind. You know, you, if the siding blows off of your house, it can have an effect on how warm or cold or insulated your house is. Facts. Facts all day. So you may not always have the money to get a roof fixed because roofing costs a lot of money. And it ain't like back in the day. Back in the day, roofers seemed to have a little bit more integrity. They would go up on your roof, see what was wrong, and they would fix whatever was wrong. Sometimes you uh, you only needed a patch. And so that's what they would do. Oh, we would. You know, ma'am, ma'am or sir, you know, I, I saw what was going on up there and uh, it looks like all it, it looks like the um, the insulation around it, around your chimney has come um, has come apart. And I think that if we just insulated your chimney, then it would stop the uh, the water from coming in, because other than that, I, y- your roof looks pretty, pretty tight. That's how they would do it back in the day now. They don't even go on your roof. They come in your house. They look up at your ceiling. They say, yep, it's leaking. And they tell you, this is how much it's going to cost to put a new roof on. And that's how it goes nowadays. I've seen it. I'm like, uh. Write you out an estimate, $7,000. $7,000. You got that much? You ain't got that much. No, nah, I'm lying. I mean, I mean, I, I, ain't, I ain't lying, but I can't speak for how much money you had. What I do know is seven thousand dollars cash is a lot of money. If that don't put a dent in your savings, you are saving month. You are saving ass month. Mm-hmm. $7,000 
says, he says, sorry, I don't miss living in a house at all. Okay. Um, God willing. Oh, God was telling me he was done with home. He wanted me to, he wanted me to leave. I didn't leave and everything turned, it turned in on me. The repairs was too high. Mm -hmm. That's so true. I, I suffer cold. This I, I suffer cold in this apartment in the wintertime. That's that's the only thing wrong with this apartment. I gotta get a, I gotta uh get me and Olivia some space heaters for this winter. That's why I'm listen, y'all live up there in Michigan, man. Michigan cold. And it's crazy because y'all up there in that cold, y'all kind of used to it. So y'all don't really be thinking about it. Y'all come down to Philly, it's like going down south to y'all. We go up there, we like, yo, this is like Canada. It's the coldest, it's freezing up there. My people's in Milwaukee, even though I think Milwaukee might be a little bit up farther north than, than, than the D, but it's up there. Y'all up there. You know what I'm saying? And some of y'all don't live directly in in Michigan no more. I mean, in um in Detroit no more. Y'all y'all done went farther up. That's Canada all day, all day. Cold baby, it's cold. So, yeah, you got to get that heat situation. You got to get it right. That Michigan cold is laughing at space heaters. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, okay. If you put two space heaters in the bathroom, yeah, that thing going to be nice and toasty. You come out of that bathroom, you going to have a problem, son. <laughs> you got a problem, baby. And it might sound like I'm exaggerating for people who haven't been there. But for people who've been up there, they know this is actual facts, baby. This ain't nothing but the truth. A shout out to all my peoples in the D. Because personally, there are a lot of good people in the D that I know. They ain't got nothing to do with that weather, though. Because that weather is not a friend. It's not a friend. So, so yeah. So yeah, um, something like a heater, something like a, a roof roof repairs. It costs a lot of money to get a roof fixed. No, like I said, the roofer will come in your house, look up at your ceilings, and be like, "All right, write out the estimate. This is how much it costs for a new roof: five thousand, seven thousand. If you get a roof done for for less than five thousand dollars, it's like." It's like God has really blessed you because they be trying to make sure that they take all your money away. Now, here's some relief. Homeowners insurance. Homeowners insurance. Every person who owns a home should carry homeowners insurance. A lot of people think that homeowners insurance is only for... Only for like if there's a fire or a major uh, natural disaster, like a tree falls on your house or, you know, you know, big, big, big repairs. And that's not true. Depending on the coverage that you have have selected, you know, depending on what your budget is, your homeowner's insurance covers everything in your home. And it has to be restored back to pre-existing condition. So whatever exist whatever condition your house was in before whatever happened to it happened to it and that claim you have to get it they have to pay for it to be restored back to how it was before. No if ands or buts. Now home um, um insurance companies have been doing all of this crazy stuff over the years to try to get out of paying claims. And that's why sometimes it's good to go ahead and use a public adjuster. A public adjuster is sort of like a, um, the homeowner's lawyer that negotiates 
and deals with the insurance company. Because your insurance company only wants to deal with you. And, and they want to deal with you because they know that you don't know the game. So they're going to make sure that they pay for the minimum, get out of paying certain things, you know, because you don't know. When you have insurance, a lot of times you don't know what your rights are. You don't understand how it works. And a lot of people don't even report their claims to an insurance company because they think that their premiums are going to go up. Well, I have good news, good news, good, good news. Your insurance premiums will never increase on your homeowner's insurance because you made claims. It doesn't matter if your house burned up in a fire or was damp heavily damaged in a fire or water damage or a or, or a natural disaster or if the big bad wolf came and blew it down. Your insurance companies, I mean your insurance premiums by law in each state say that they cannot increase your insurance premiums because you had a claim. That's much different than auto insurance. With auto insurance, your claim, your, your premiums go up as soon as you have an accident. Or if your driving record goes bad and all that kind of stuff. Car insurance premiums uh, are very uh, variable and they go up all the time. But home insurance, they know, the insurance companies know that Hardly anybody ever um, files a claim for home homeowners insurance. You know how many people have been carrying homeowners insurance for decades, and they never they never file a claim unless it's a really really big claim. But you know what? I'll tell you this, so you understand. And by the way, thank you for that super sticker, um, T. Carry. Right? I, I, I you know, listen. I'm having me a, a little day here. You know what I mean? It's right there in red. I appreciate me some you. I appreciate me some you. Yes, 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 it's true, and I do. I appreciate me some you. Yes. Yeah. People have been um, covering homeowners insurance for years and never never filed a claim unless a tree fell on their house or or um um, if they uh got robbed and, and somebody cleaned their whole place out and, and things like that, your insurance company, your homeowner's insurance covers everything just about. But you should ask, you should ask what co what coverage you have because if you have blanket coverage, it covers it, it co covers everything from A to Z. To give an example, oh, by the way, if it's your fault, it's still it's still covered. If it's your fault, it's still covered. You don't have to worry. So people be thinking, well, I, I messed up my own house. So, you know, I ain't, I'm not going to file no claim for that. No. You file, you call that insurance company and you tell them, yes, I crashed my, I crashed my lawnmower into, into, into the, uh, into my, into my, sh my shed and ruined the whole thing. I I was on my phone and and I crashed my damn uh, um, um, John Deere into my uh, into my, uh, my my shed out in the back, ruined everything. Covered, it's covered, and no, your payments will not increase because of what what happened. Let's say you, I don't know, uh, will you put the stopper in the tub? And you were filling up the tub um, um, because you were about to take a bath and you got distracted. You got distracted. Somebody called you outside because um, because a fox was eating, uh, was about to eat all your chickens. Or your, your three-year-old was about to get attacked by a bear. So you went and saved your three-year-old from, from the bear attack. But the the bear the bear got got the drop on your three year old. You took your three year old to the to the um to the emergency room, and you when you got back, your house was flooded because you left the tub running 
forgot to turn off the tub faucet. The tub was running the over. It ran over the overflow. Your house is. You see your in the living room or whatever. Your house is leaking, leaking, leaking. It's water everywhere. You're having a bad day, but guess what? Your insurance company covers that. Your insurance company covers that. Your insurance company covers that, and it won't raise your premiums because they can't do it by law. Down by law. Down by down by down down by law. Down down by law. Down by down by down down by law. That's right. Homeowners insurance premiums cannot be increased no matter how many claims you cause. I mean, you 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 claim. No, no matter how many claims you file. That's the beauty of homeowners insurance. It's all for you. So use it. Use it. You're paying those, you're paying those premiums every month, you know, however, however much um for however much your 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 home is worth. But homeowners insurance is better than car owners insurance because of how it works and how it benefits the homeowner. So once again, if you if you're not listening or if you're just tuning in, homeowners insurance covers mistakes natural disasters and mistakes by you let's say you um were bringing in you were getting ready to paint your house and you mistakenly spilled a five gallon paint can all over your brand new hardwood floors your pretty hardwood floors ruined ruined by oil-based paint oh no oh no no don't pay for that yourself you got homeowners insurance call the insurance company and they got to restore those 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 beautiful hardwood floors. Minus your your deductible, they got to pay for that though. And your insurance um, premiums don't go up. Cal Chamber, let me friend me, favorita. Always a good thing for me to see ya. Yeah, 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 yeah. TK Wright says, um, it's right next to canada go across the bridge boom canada yeah yeah uh yeah i'm just saying i'm just saying you know it, it, it's closer to south canada but any canada is cold to me to me any canada is cold and to me, any Florida is hot. What you know? What you know? Stacy White says a leaking roof. A leaking roof, almost three thousand. Almost shoot. You got a leak. Uh, you you got a, a roof. A roof put on for three thousand dollars. You did. You did hella okay. You doing all right. You doing all right. He says, my doctor wanted me to move to a warmer climate. Uh, yeah, and you should if he paid for it. If he paid for it, yeah, you, yeah, you got it. I don't mean him just paying for the move. You know what I mean? Finance the trip. That's the fastest and best way I know to get what you want from somebody else. Pay for it. Pay for it. Pay for it. But, uh, yeah, y'all, we talking about home repairs that have to wait sometimes. Sometimes the money ain't there. Sometimes the money just ain't there. And you have to make an executive decision about how you want to allocate your funds or 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 whether whether it's going to get done today, whether you're going to go and book book a um or schedule a consultation with a contractor or not. Sometimes you gotta wait. Make sure y'all hit that like button, y'all. Make sure that you share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, this is the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. And we're talking about home repairs that have to wait sometimes. 
You want a deck put out in the back of your in, in your backyard or in your front. You know, because some people have some people have houses that don't have a backyard. Some people have houses that don't have a backyard. So you might have um a alleyway or a driveway in back of your house. So you might have a front yard, like many houses in Philly, row homes, you know, they have a front yard. But they don't have a backyard. And everybody, you know, you have cookouts and people come over. You have gatherings. You have company and stuff like that. You cook out in the summertime or whatever. You know, you don't always want to be out there on the porch or on your on, on your front, on, on, in your front yard. You know, you want to entertain in the back. So if you don't have a back uh, backyard, but you have a garage and, and a driveway, you might build a deck over, you know, a deck over the driveway. So you can entertain out back. Mad privacy. Privacy. That's a home improvement expense. That it that can be very expensive. The cost of wood nowadays is just so ridiculous. Man, we used to get plywood. We used to get joists, or that's you know, two by fours and two th- two by threes to y'all, you know. Um, we used to get it for cheap, 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 cheap. We used to have connections. Connection. Con- there used to be a such thing as, as as a lumber yard. You hardly ever see lumber yards anymore. But in, in 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 my day, we had lumber yards. You could go to lumber yards and lumber yard and get a lot of lumber, get a lot of wood. You know, now you got to go to Home Depot. You got to go to Lowe's. Before you you didn't have to go all the way out driving nowhere. It was lumber yards, electrical supply stores, plumbing supply stores, right around the way. Y'all know what I'm talking about. People from around the way know what I'm talking about. See, and this is what I have against big box stores. Yes, they seem to um have products for cheaper and all that kind of stuff. And we and, and people who don't understand how it works in the community. Or works against the community. Don't they? Don't they? Don't see what I'm talking about. The reason that we don't have local lumber yards and electrical supply stores and plumbing supply stores is because they got soaked up by the big box stores like Home Depot and and uh, and and Lowe's. They got frozen out. <clears throat> Before the big box stores couldn't compete with the with the local local supply store, they couldn't compete. So, do Carol, you might remember remember Mister Goodbyes. Mister Goodbyes had had home home um home I don't, what else um building supply um um products for cheap 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 cheap, but they still didn't make it. They didn't make it. Mr. Goodbyes. Yeah. Valerie Green. Valerie. Valerie. What's going on, Mark? Good to see me some of you. Thanks for coming on by. Thanks for stopping going through. We're talking about home repairs that have to wait sometimes. And insurance. Carol says, Carol says yep. Sure do. Mr. Goodbyes was my spot. I'm trying to tell you. Mr. Goodbyes had it going on. Somebody wasn't handling their business properly. They wasn't handling their business. You know, if you wanted, if you wanted cheap tile, they had it. If you wanted um paneling and all that kind of stuff, whether it was whether it was the the paneling for the bath bathroom or the kitchen or or even, you know, shout out to listen, listen. If any of y'all still got wood paneling in your house, houses, in your homes, you know, if y'all still got, shout out to people who still have wood paneling down their basement and the bar. The bar and the wood paneling down the basement. Shout out to y'all. You know who you are. You know who you are. 
You know what I'm saying? Still got the big screen TV down the basement. And I ain't talking about the flat screen. I'm talking about the big screen, the big picture too, big screen down the basement. Ain't nothing wrong with this TV. Ain't nothing wrong with this TV. TV so heavy, you ain't trying to carry that thing out of there. You know what I mean? I'm talking about the 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 TV, the floor model, big screen TV. 36 to 40 inches of pure Trinitron Technicolor. What you know? <laughs> what you know? Wood paneling. You know how much it costs to take all that wood paneling out your basement, smooth out them walls, and you might have to do it because if you've had wood paneling down your basement, you probably had it down there for 50 years. 50 years. It might be going all the way back to the 60s. We're talking about almost 60 years. You had a you had the wood paneling down the basement like they had that on the Brady Bunch. You know, you go watch old episodes of the Brady Bunch. They had the wood paneling down the basement. That's what we used to do, wood panel. But if it's a leak in one of your walls, you know that wood paneling is going to get all messed up, and your walls are going to start crumbling and, and deteriorating. And it's pushing that wood paneling forward. You got to get it taken out of there. You got to get it fixed. Now, that's that might not be something that you can afford today. Because you got to go get a carpenter to, you know, go ahead. and you, They got to knock all that stuff out. And somebody who knows how to work with cement work. Man, listen, it can get expensive. You got to get rid of all that wood paneling, man. You know, I was keeping the wood paneling down the basement. Because I remember my grand, this is my granddad old house. You know, I moved in my granddad old house. He had a wood panel down the basement. You know, we bring back memories when I was a kid. At the bar down the bit. We used to play bar down the basement at my granddaddy house. We used to play bar. You know what I mean? Sipping on that. We used to sneak and take sips of the Cuddy Sark. Cuddy Sark. Who remember? Who knows what I'm talking about? The, 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 the Cuddy Sark. We take a cat full. It had the green cat on the Cuddy Sark. Oh, you going to drink some? I'm going to drink some too. Drunk as hell. Playing bar with the wood paddling down the basement. Cuddy Sark. The yellow label had the ship on it. What you know? What y'all know? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Carol said cheap scotch. <laughs> that cutty sark, baby. Got that cutty sark. <laughs> Tommy D's. Ooh, yeah, Tommy D's was a good one too. Tommy D's was a good one. That was a good one. 56 and and uh what was that? 56 and uh what was it walnut? It wasn't chestnut. Is it walnut? I think it was walnut. Was it walnut? It was it walnut? It wasn't spruce. It wasn't spruce. It wasn't spruce. <laughs> a locust? Was it locust? No, no. Was it walnut? It was walnut. It was walnut, right? It was chestnut? Chestnut goes, goes east. It was chestnut? I thought it was walnut because walnut goes west. It was walnut. Okay, it was walnut. Okay. I, 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 Carol says Tommy D's was there. One, one was on Erie Ave. Yep, it sure was. Sure was. Valerie said we had a we had a father and son hardware store at Fifty Fourth and Market next to the next to the number house. Well known number house. Mm, T. Gary Wright says, was trying to say chestnut. Okay, cool, cool, cool. One on Aramingo. Mm -hmm. This is all my local peoples. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what it is. But anyway, home repairs that have to wait sometimes and insurance. So if y'all, if you if y'all um just coming to the show, or whatever, that's what we're talking about. Home repairs that have to wait sometimes. 
Anybody who owns their home or who have, who has ever owned a home, you know that there's always some home repairs that need to be done. Even if even if it's just landscaping, cutting your cutting your grass, whatever. You know, you want your home to look nice. You want to, you want your home to look beautiful. You want to, you know what I mean? It it doesn't necessarily have to be a show place, but if you have the opportunity and the choice, you of course you're going to make sure that your house is um um a show place. Uh, why wouldn't you? Make the thing nice. Your home is your castle, and it should always be a place that where you come home and feel good about it. But the money that it takes sometimes are the things, the t- the money that it takes to to maintain your home and, and and maintain the upkeep of your home is the thing, is the single thing that most people who don't own a home use as a reason that they don't want to buy a home. They want to just call the landlord and call the. Li- Call the landlord. Call the call the la- call, call the landlord. Call the call, call the landlord. I get it. I do. But you know, owning a house is an asset. It actually brings money to you. It takes money, but it also brings money to you. You know, and you can always. If you have equity in your home, you can borrow against it. You can you can sell your home. You know, you move out of your house. You you decide. Well, listen, I, um, I'm getting too old. You know, to live in this big house by myself. I I'm gonna go. You know, move in a nursing facility or or uh, um or a senior living facility or whatever. I'm gonna sell my house. My house is my house is good in the hood. Four hundred thousand. So I'm about to skate on up out of here with half a half a mil almost. Almost half a mil. I'm good. That's one thing you can never do with an apartment. In an apartment, you can sublet the apartment and get a little bit of the rent, but you have to have that uh, approved by the landlord. Most people don't, but you're supposed to. Most people don't, but you're supposed to. Nonetheless, there are a whole lot of things that you can do with your home that you cannot do with an apartment. But because those things that you want to do will cost money out of pocket and can sometimes be very expensive, it discourages people from wanting to live in their own house, move in their own house. What the heck? Huh, one of my groups. Somebody snuck a porn video in there. I'm going. I'm about to. T- I'm, I'm about to turn away from it right now. Yep, right now. But I'm going to note. You know, I, I'll go back to it later to report it. That that's disgusting. I can't believe that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What my group? It was ugly. Put it on speaker. Oh, let me see. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Is it this one? Dang, what was it? What was the group? Oh, wait. Was it this one? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, it was that one. Oh, where'd it go? Rats. They couldn't have took it down that fast. You know I'm looking for that joint, right? Yeah. Oh well, oh well. I'll find it later. I'll find it again later. Well, anyway, 
So yeah, uh, yeah. Home repairs can discourage a person from wanting to wanting to buy their own home. But I I, I encourage people to go ahead and buy their own homes. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially if you have children. You know, I think that all children should be left a family home to um, do with it, do with it as they please. You know, leave it to their kids. I always that's that that's just that's just my way of thinking. Everybody doesn't see it that way. And I, I get it. I get it. And I don't get it at the same time. I always encourage people. Well, the other thing about home ownership is this. Regardless of the repairs. When you when especially for, for black people, we need to understand this. When we don't own things in our neighborhoods, we don't control our neighborhoods. So when when we don't want like, let's say, liquor stores um or any other type of businesses that we don't agree with when we don't want those in our neighborhood it doesn't matter our voices won't be heard if we don't own our homes renters have no recourse they have no power politically they don't you know black people talk about all this gentrification and all of that you know what the number one defense against gentrification is black ownership the reason that we can't stop our neighborhoods from looking different than we want them to look is because we don't own our homes or we sold our homes. Simple as that. When you, a bunch of homeowners that get together and form, you know, form a, a neighborhood um, group or um, what do you call it? Uh, coalition or whatever. They can stop anything from coming in their neighborhoods that they want. That's what white people do. That's why you don't see certain businesses out in out, out in white neighborhoods. I ain't talking about in the city. I'm talking about out in the white neighborhood, out in the county. You don't see in Pennsylvania, we don't ha we have liquor stores that are run by the state, and then we have delis that are run delis that only that they can't sell straight liquor. But they can sell a little bit of wine and they can sell beer, beer and wine coolers and a little bit of wine. Not a lot of wine, a little bit of wine. But the state controls the liquor stores. You don't see delis out there in the county. Why? Because the homeowners ain't having it. You see a bunch of delis in the hood. Why? Because we can't stop it. We don't own our homes. We don't own them. So what do we have? We have gentrification and we have businesses, corner stores that, you know, sometimes are, are, are uh, fronts for drugs and things like that. We, we can stop all of that if we owned our homes because the, we, we have a political voice when that's the case. It ain't hard to understand. Okay. Um... Carol says, every year at income tax time, I use money to make improvements. That's what's up. Carol says, one of my aunt's houses sold for $285,000 in West Oak Lane in September. Sure. And you wait till you see how much it sells for the next time. Man, I'm telling you, I be I get these listings sent to me in my emails. I be looking through these. I be like, ain't nobody paying that for no somebody paying for it because the listings keep coming up and up and up and up. <laughs> Valerie says, since moving to Atlanta, I come to Philly often for business. I'd rather stay in an Airbnb than trying to stay with family. Many people are doing many people are doing this now okay carol says sadly some children won't keep keep um keep up the property that's left to them that's true that's true too that shouldn't discourage you from um from from leaving the option you know people have to come into their into their good senses when they come into it uh carol says nope some of the delis actually sell sell shots of liquor <laughs> But then you know they ain't supposed to do that. 
but just you know, um, which ones? You know, just you know, because I might need to. You know, you got my number. You know, holler at me. You know, for informational purposes. Information purposes. Anyway, um. See, Harry Wright says, Carol, that's a fact. They don't value it as much because they 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 didn't um they didn't do the work to get the house. Mm -hmm. Oh, they no, they they didn't work to get the house. Okay, I get it. Uh, Carol says, a lot of people from New York and other other states are buying properties in Philly because New York, for example, rents are terrible. Yep, and that's what's driving up. New York, D.C., and Chicago, people from those areas have driven up the property values and the cost of homes in Philadelphia. So that's, that's why I tell people, do not sell your home. Don't sell it. I'm trying to tell you. You're going to make more money keeping it. Because the prices are only going up. Carol says, Omar, I've reported at least two so far. I can dig it. I'm sick of them coming in here, getting the hood drunk. Don't forget to text me the addresses of some of those lame, sinister villain delis. I'm mad at them. So, uh, yeah, home repairs, they have to wait sometimes. Your roof might have to wait sometimes. Like, l- listen, you can put that, you can put, you you got a leaky roof, it don't rain all the time. You know, <laughs> as my old head used to say, the roof only leak when it rains. You might have to throw that pan up, un- up under that leak. Beep. Beep. Shout out to the sound of 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 um um water dripping inside of a of a of a steel pot. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, yeah. You might not have that much money to to get that repair, and sometimes. Sometimes um, your homeowner's insurance might front on on exactly where the leak came from. You know what I'm saying? It's a, roofing is a funny thing when it comes to homeowner's insurance. And that's why people sometimes get a public adjuster. So they can't haggle their way out of making that repair. Because the, um, the, the public adjuster is going to fight for you. But at the same time, public adjusters can be expensive. Because sometimes the money that they give you, they want 35000 I mean, 35% of whatever you got. 35%? Like, dang. I hope you got me at least 50% more than I would have gotten on my own. But it still can work in your favor. And not all public adjustment companies charge the same thing. I've known, like, I know a good one. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you some love. His name is Steven. On on uh on Facebook, his name is Stephen Maat. Stephen Johnson is his name. Stephen Johnson, and he does his own public adjusting. He's done some things for my mom a few times, and he gets it done. <clears throat> He's a good dude, good, good black man looking out for people in the hood. And he ain't charging no thirty five percent for you know in order to do the public adjusting work. So you know, if y'all need more information. I put y'all on. Cause he ain't the only one I know, but for 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 our purposes, he he has been the best. He be getting money too. All right. Um, Valerie says my grandparents' home is at 60, 61st of Market. Nice house, but the wheels of soul control. That's the, oh my god, you. They sure do. The wheels of soul. That's a motorcycle gang, y'all. 
okay, it's a motorcycle club. Bunch of old heads riding around on, on motorcycles acting wild. Shout out to the Wheels of Soul. So, so they don't come come through here and shoot up my credit. Okay. Um, Carol says, and causing a lot of crime outside of their establishments. Yeah. Valley says, Carol, I lived I lived on market between 60 and 61st. Really nice, really, really nice new apartments. Three months. Three months in, I got a, a good taste of, of wheels of soul. They were smoking, smoking weed on my steps. I was scared. Oh man. Ooh. Wheels of soul, huh? Mm. 60th. Mm. Yeah, that's a bad look. Home repairs, that, like I said, you might have to wait. You know, until you save up a little bit more money to to uh to fix that roof. If your gutters, if your gutters are uh are clogged, then they causing flooding, you know, in your front yard or something like that. Well, you know, you can clean out gut gutters yourself. And I'm gonna tell y'all another thing, man. You know, you can learn how to do so many things just going on YouTube. Yo, people have learned how to fix cars. Houses um deliver a baby on YouTube. I'm trying to tell you, there's there's a video for anything you want to know how to do, and it would be a good idea for you to educate yourself on how to do a lot of things because um once you start to get better at it, your confidence is going to go up and it will ease the financial hardship that that paying for costly repairs may give to you. TK Wright says, yeah, um, um, YouTube University. Man, listen, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Just like I'm on YouTube right now, you know, putting y'all on about how homeowners insurance works and all of that kind of stuff. Listen, there's something, there's a video on there for everything. Man, somebody um learn how somebody I know learn how to um um put um put brakes on their car watching YouTube. I was like. You trust you trust yourself. She's like, shoot, I got it done. I'm like, all right, I ain't mad at you. I ain't riding with you, but I, I ain't mad at you. But I did learn how to fix my washer and dryer on YouTube. I ain't gonna lie, and and I did it, and it it worked. I learned how to fix my washer and my dryer on YouTube. That saved me a bunch of money. Cause I knew when I when I had got my washer fixed twice before I watched a YouTube video showing me how to do it, and you know that I was like it was 150 here and blah blah, blah. and it was done quick. I was like, what did they do? Went watch that video, saw that part that they used. It was a little it's a little plastic part with rubber around it, and when you when you fill up your washing machine too much, it breaks that little piece. And then the motor won't work anymore. Yeah. TK Wright says, I did that. Learn, learn to do certain things in my car. Mm-hmm. 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 On the low, I've seen other mechanics go on YouTube if they're unsure about, like, let's say, a foreign car or something like that. I've seen them go look right on. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I can do it. I got you. I got you. I got you. All right, y'all. Home repairs that, that have to wait sometimes. If you're a homeowner, you know what I'm talking about. You ain't always want to have money for everything that needs to be done. You know, 
you know, um, I don't know about children of other ethnic backgrounds, but I know when you have a bunch of black children, it's going to have an effect on all of the doorknobs and on all of the doors inside your home. I've been in many a black home, seen all kinds of doorknobs hanging off. They hanging down. Sometimes the doorknob ain't even there. You can see the hole right in the jaw. You know how you get the door to close? How you get the door to stay closed when you ain't got no latch and you ain't got no doorknob? You got to take a piece of cloth and put it put it between the door and the and the door jam and close that door and keep it wedged. That's how you keep the cat or the dog out. What? You got to do what you got to do. Nigganomics, 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 Afro-American engineering. Nigganomics, Afro-American engineering. Carol says, oh my. <laughs> I hate seeing that hate. Black children be hell on earth with them doors. They do. Door knobs be hanging. They be leaning. Leaning. I can't stay on that door. You got me leaning, 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 leaning. I can't stay on that door. You got me leaning. Got me leaning off you. <laughs> Gary Wright says hairstylist as well. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Valerie Green says it's the shaky toilet for me. People tend to, to let the oh my god, you ain't never the lie Val. Yo, a, yeah, a stable, a unstable toilet ain't cool. Like, first of all, first of all, first of all, you don't really be wanting to use a toilet in somebody else's house. Like, there's certain trusted houses that I'd use a toilet in. Other than that, I try, yeah, you know I mean, not to have to, yeah, you know I mean. TK Wright says, I feel attacked. I can't stay on that door. You got me leaning, 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 leaning. Well, sometimes a better option than the doorknob is the door handle. Look into that. Door handles seem to last longer than door knobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might have to get the little hook with the eye latch. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, the eye latch and the little, the little hook, joy. You know what I mean? You got the handle and the little hook with the eye latch. So you can lock it from the inside. Nobody can't see it from the outside. I can't stay on the door. You got me leaning, 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 leaning. My bad, John. My bad. <laughs> Strumming my pain with his finger, singing my life with his words, talking about my door knob. It... My bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, she says the shaky toilet only, only, only needs shims. And 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 sometimes, uh, sometimes, sometimes the uh, the toilet bolts can't reach the um the flange. And, you know, in order to get to the flange, you got to take the toilet up. So sometimes the flange is broken. But see, that's that's deeper. 
that's deeper plumbing. To, like for a lot of people, they don't know what I'm talking about when they talk about the flange. You know what I mean? All they know is they the wax ring. They might know something about that. They call it the the the, the O ring, the O ring. That's what people who don't know they call it the O ring. Let's do these birthday shout outs. We have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious. November 6th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They get number one out the box. Shima Barfield turning. 35 years old today. And Kitty Harris, happy birthday to you. And Monica Sims, turning 55 years old today. Happy birthday to you, Monica. And Shantia, Shantia Hayes, hailing from the D. She's turning 52 years old today. And Tamara oh, Bun Roberts, turning 48 years old today. And Vermeen Stroman, turning 51 years old today. And Doris E. McMillan, happy birthday to you. And Carrie Ann Walker, turning 34 years old today. And Kachina Wright, turning 48 years old today, and Nikki Giovanni, turning 42 years old today. Not that you know what I'm talking about. Okay, and, and Vanessa Christmas Freeman, happy birthday to you. And Ramesses, Ramesses Moore, turning 37 years old today. And James Bleasert, James Bleasert, turning 58 years old today. And my man Thomas Russell, happy birthday to you. And my girl, go get a K-Ray. Turning 73 years old today. Do the damn thing, okay? And Vincent Colasso turning 58 years old today. And last but not least, hailing from over there on the San Francisco side, the Bay Area, my girl Stephanie Ross. I want to say happy birthday to all of y'all. And anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious, glorious, glorious. November 6th. I hope that today finds you a good health, happiness, mind, body, soul, and spirit. All y'all go ahead and turn up. Turn up. But don't turn up too loud. Just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. I rock out. Rock on and do the damn, the damn, the rock out. Rock on and do the, do the, do the damn, rock out. Rock on and do the damn thing. You do your thing. Y'all represent the queens and kings. You do your thing. Y'all represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And any, any, to any, to anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours. And remember, man, listen, check it out. Peep game. Listen. Being a homeowner is a good thing, but you're going to have to make repairs. But that shouldn't discourage you from um, buying a home, owning a home, fixing up your home. You just have to prioritize just like anything else. Many of you drive and you know that your car needs um, gas all the time. It doesn't stop you from 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 um, from driving the car or getting a car. Many of y'all know that there are people, there are bad people or devil devil like people in church. But you still go there to get your praise on. You know, what I mean, and, and secure your salvation. Don't let don't let the negativity of one thing. Stop you from reaching greatness in that area. Meet the challenges, learn about what your options and your um and your resources are, and do the damn thing. Rock on. You can do it. You can do it. Peace to all my day ones, my everydays, and my brand news. I love y'all to death. Resuscitate y'all. Love y'all right back to life. Make sure y'all hit that like button, y'all. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. I hope y'all enjoyed listening to this show as much as I enjoyed broadcasting it. We will be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for another Daily go get show. So y'all make sure y'all have a great day today. You know, finish out the rest of the weekend and do it strong. And if you work this weekend, you the real MVP. Go get that money, that money hustle, that money hustle. All right. So Blog Talk, we going to get you out of here. A year, 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 A year, I say. I said. mm mm uh, uh, uh. It's that season. Thank you for using blog talk. It's that video. season. Goodbye. Yeah. And for my YouTubers, you know just how we do, but thanks for coming on through. See you on the other side, my boobers. Peace. All right, y'all.